All right, so we've tried a few different iterations of black red priest of the forgotten gods decks since the latest set dropped that basically this is basically the card that like headlines the aristocrats decks and this is a build that's a little bit different than some of the other ones we played i kind of like the direction it's going in since the other ones that had kind of middling results and like we're going a little bit bigger with cards like rekindling phoenix and chandra and god eternal bantu in the main decks we've got ways to like kind of punch through the mid-range and control matchups and grind grind a little bit more so i'm gonna go ahead and jump on into a league and uh, see how this goes yeah modian when people submit decks you notice when i accept them i always say i'm going to change some of the details a little bit occasionally so i did make a couple of changes if this was you're the one that originally submitted this so i pushed some of some of the details around here in a way that i think is a little bit better for game ones to start yeah yeah so i think I'm not sure I want three Bantu in the 75 even. I've, I've, I've slotted the third one into the board. The person who originally submitted, like, I believe, had three in the main. So. I think he's, like, reasonable in some situations, but, like, he's really awkward in multiples. It's okay. Not amazing, but fine. Would love to draw two drop. Like, Priest, priest on two would be insane here. Would be a crazy curve if we hit that. All right. Um, what's our most aggressive start here? remember chalky i feel like we've registered her in something before but i don't actually remember offhand yeah bantu's definitely been a card that i've been uh kind of underwhelmed with playing it in the past i'm gonna elect to play rekindling phoenix here as opposed to judith or to vault because this way if we hit a land next turn we can go three plus two Some kind of just guy control brew here it looks like so they're gonna do not do a whole lot and get run down though is judy all right i mean if they hit a sweeper next turn they stabilize the board a little bit but like this comes back and they take they don't even really do that right like if they solar blaze us we draw four they take three and phoenix comes back Seems like a pretty bad spot for them. Come seal away. Come seal away. Come seal away with me. Come seal away. Come seal away. Do, 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 do. Oh, they didn't even see Tibalt. Old Tibbers. Poor Tibbers. Looks like they're playing a control deck. Gonna board in. Gonna board in duress. And graph theater, maybe the devil's okay. Footlight fiend probably leaves a bit to be desired here. They don't have little things that we want to poke off. Heart fire could trim for similar reasons. Give this a go. Kind of want the bedevils, but I don't really know that I have anything I, I super want to cut. I guess priest of the forgotten gods is not great, but that almost feels like. I'm, like, cutting too much of my early plays. Like, do I do I want to, like, full-on mid-range them? Because, like, now, now I'm, like, really pulling up, right, with, like, extra things like this. Let's try this and see how it goes. We're definitely not super excited to play against a bunch of sweepers post-board, which they're likely to have. So, like, pulling up makes sense in that aspect a little bit. At least we don't have to worry about cry, so we'll get our Judith and our Midnight Reaper triggers. Jundapants, J Thunderpants. Thanks for the brand new tier one sub. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Like pretty reasonable. Hopefully we hit a third land, third and fourth land, and get to head off to the races. Mm, I can see that. Heartfire is a way to insulate our creatures against exile removal. 
The problem is that, like, so, like, if you think about the last game where they seal await us, especially when we're boarding in more expensive cards, I feel like there's going to be a lot of situations where they're, like, spending exile removal on our stuff, but we just, like, don't have spare mana. Like, holding up two mana is a big ask in a deck like this. Hey! Your Mardu, Knights your Mardu Bugler deck seemed really sweet. Our, our Bant deck was not well equipped to deal with, Knight of Grace. Soren, Soren plus Bugler is a heck of a lot of value. Alright, we unlocked the third land at least here. Sweet. You should uh you should link your YouTube channel or wherever you're gonna post end up posting the video so people that might want to see your Mardu deck can find it later. A lot of, a lot of people in chat that thought you were doing was sweet. Also, since you're sub to the server now, or since you're sub to the channel, be sure to pop into the Discord there. If you are someone who's subbed and you make magic content or stream, there is a community streams channel in the subs discord where you are encouraged to share when you are, when you are making sweet stuff. I think I just want to attack here. Just like punch them while they're stumbling. Wow, what did they take that? So they, they didn't take Settle the Wreckage against us, so they, they must have taken a land. So I'm definitely attacking with these. I think I'm just playing Chandra. I think I'm just playing Chandra. <laughs> Got Eternal Bond to you, just like looking pretty awkward here, like he usually does in my experience. Hey, Mr. Stanky, thank you for the two month reset. Welcome back. Oh, they misclicked. Oh, oh, opponent. Been there. Oh, that, that always feels rough. Always feels rough. Cards got cards got modes. I mean that wasn't even a shame concede. They were just dead because my board was still there. It's like we're weren't making it through. Always both modes. Never, never not both modes. If you always get in the habit of clicking them both, you are far less likely to mess it up on muscle memory. I think I want to bottom that because I just really want a chance to hit a two drop on two. Hex 15 coming in hot with the brand new prime support. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, get him. Thanks for keeping me in play this month with that. Oh no, this is going to be shocking, isn't it? Rough. Rough. Uh, my opponent cast a deafening Clarion and forgot to choose the deal three damage mode. Roll, eh? Oh no, my opponent's name is Trash Collector. Does that mean they're gonna throw us away if they beat us? Are we are we the trash today, opponent? Bring out bring out your dad. Hey, thanks, T-Dub. I'm going to take this trade here. Feels a little bit bad if they have Collision Colossus, but I don't think I can leave this Midnight Reaper in play while also taking three more. Listen, anyone who has ever used a Wizards of the Coast software product knows that their developers don't believe in garbage collection. There's a reason all these things leak memory.
found the nine. First strike is read. How did the Grixis deck perform? It performed like every other Grixis deck, which is to say it was incredibly disappointing. <clears throat> it was incredibly disappointing. I think I'm playing this and then I'm blocking plus sacking to Heartfire to shoot this. Uh, Saltai Flash got beat up by Knight of Grace twice and it beat the non Knight of Grace decks. Saltai's, Saltai's Flash with one true nemesis is the card Knight of Grace. So unfortunately, the way magic works, the way we have to choose things, we cannot, cannot use these death triggers to clean up the egg here. Which answers the age-old question, which came first, the trigger or the egg? Oh no! Oh no! Mercy! Mercy! Mmm. Mmm. Don't tell me how to live my life, Magic Arena. Yikes. All right. Uh, yeah, there's a, the black-white Aristocrats deck on my website is updated, and I think it's very reasonable. As always, if you head on over to magicesports.net and click standard at the top, you'll be able to find all of my all of my favorite decks for various things. I think Midnight Reaper is probably a trim here against a more aggressive deck. Bantu's just like okay as a big booty, I think. Definitely want more removal. This is a decent blocker. I'm gonna go down to one of these. Get the Twix sponsorship. I'm not understand. I sh I'm not sure I understand that pop culture reference. How did you end up with the Magic Esports URL? Well, like many things related to the MPL that seems like they should be common sense and easy for a company to figure out that has billions of dollars or millions of dollars, Wizards of the Coast didn't own MagicEsports.net. So one of my subs bought it and forwarded it to my website. That's yeah, they bought it for $12. It's not like they had to buy it from someone else for piles of money. They bought it for the minimum domain purchase cost. Poor Butcher. Meta Shocking Demise. This is fine. If this dies, it likes us likely to hit a land for these. And maybe these Phoenixes can pull us through the game. Ooh, Chandra. Yikes. Never lucky. I don't really like Heartfire. Every time I played it, I kind of regretted sacrificing a creature. Well, I mean, like, I feel like if you're regretting sacrificing the creature, you probably just, like, shouldn't cast it, right? Like, Heartfire is optional to cast a lot of the time. Like, Heartfire, Heartfire is great. Like, obviously, if you only want one for one removal, Heartfire is not ideal at that. But Heartfire is good because it's flexible in a lot of different situations. Oh, alrighty. At least we get to like put Chandra into play here, right? So I get to go. You sacrifice a creature, or you? Yeah. So we get to sack both of these. Judy's triggers kill the growth chamber guardian. They have to sacrifice the girl spellbreaker. So even though we're stumbling pretty badly here, we're gonna be in a good spot. We've not tried a four Nissa plus Grace deck yet. No, probably should at some point.
Yeah, the toughest the toughest part about like all the MPL stuff is like there's so many little things that they've like missed or messed up or mismanaged where it's just like if you just like sat down myself or like dozens of other different people that just like do a bunch of magic content stuff in a room or just like can we pay you all for two hours of your time to tell us what you think about these things we would have been like oh yeah you should do this or shouldn't do that etc 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 just like very straightforward to just like just be like well that's a bad idea don't do it actually i should attack first here right because they're not gonna block Uh, bones from the yard cost two to return. Wow, they did block. All right, deal. That sounds like some sort of focus group thing, and that sounds like... Yeah, I know, hiring, hiring industry experts to, like, help you figure stuff out is wild. I think we're actually going to end up in a pretty good spot here, huh? <laughs> yeah, this card, this card's like good, but it's not quite that good, heck crab. It's not Gravecrawler. Oh, it's you burning. Yeah, yeah, the opponent missed for longer than we did and Priest was able to pull us up out of it. All right, so I've got two, so let's bring, oh, this stupid thing. Turn off auto tap, turn on full control mode. Then I can drag this up and it'll let me pick. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want it to use all my black mana here. Although I don't want to return another one, do I? I guess it didn't matter. I guess it didn't matter. It probably, like, we could, uh, we could let Twitch chat, like, navigate from here, and it just wouldn't matter, because we're just far enough ahead. Good. Good concrete example there of Priest of the Forgotten God just, like, being left unchecked and running away with the game very handily. Cards extremely powerful if they don't interact with it. Twitch plays Magic when that sounds like a hot disaster. Ah, uh, the Helix Fossil. for all the marbles. Will the trash collector take us out back, or do we get to move along to 2-0? Oh? It's against pretty reasonable removal spell if they have a thing. If they don't have a thing, we get to do this, this. Good chance this just dies. Do I want to just play this into a removal spell? Yeah, it's, it's just... We have so many things that are going to die. <clears throat> uh, you're drafting with bots, but you play against actual people. I assume this is going to die when it attacks. Really? Interesting. Lava coil. Strike, sure.
Magic can tend to have a lot going on, especially for new players. And I would assume for a lot of new players, it's easier to get started with limited than it is to get started with constructed. So I wouldn't be too surprised if a lot of the people you're playing with in like limited events are like newer, especially depending on where, what your ranking is. Though limited doesn't, limited actually doesn't pair based on record, right? Or ranking, right? Opponent stumbling and fumbling again here. I'm going to eat two of my lands since I have two more in my hand already. Yeah, draft counts towards your rank, but you don't get paired in your draft based on your ranking, right? If I recall correctly. Yeah, Bantu says permanent. He's like, okay. He's a big boy. He's men He's very menacing. Like, the fact that he says Menace probably means we're going to close this game out real quick. So, like, we're going to hit them down to five here, and they're just, like, dead to this next turn. All right. All right. Little bit of stumble and fumble there from the green-red deck. Put us up over the top. Do we know Bantu's a female from the lore? Sorry. I don't I don't follow any of the Worthos. Trader Gator is a she. That's let's just call him the Trader Gator from now on. That that sounds like an A plus. A plus nickname. Trader Gator. Yeah, seems reasonable, Solera. Like I said, I had someone submit the Simic Thief deck to the queue. I definitely planned to. Told them that it was A-OK -okay to submit. Basic Mountain, A. Yeah, all, all the gods are very reasonable cards. I feel like they did a good job of finally making a set of gods that were, like, all playable, but none of them were overbearing. I'm going to cast this, and I'm going to leave this back at home because I just need to preserve my health total in this matchup. No, no one drop here is really good for us, in addition to winning the die roll being good for us. Drawing. Having drawn two Midnight Reapers is a real liability, though. Pulling a real hog land there, Midnight Reaper. Martin Mose, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Welcome, welcome. So I assume we're going to see these two come down this turn. <clears throat> Unless they don't have a land. Oh, gosh. The Nis Nissa gives the land trample, right? Which makes Awakening much better. Oh, it's just haste vigilance, right? But it's not trample. You're super right. Really? We're killing my Phoenix. This is so good for me. Especially on the back of having a second Phoenix in my hand. Yes, Judy. That's true. It having vigilance is like above, above Emerage. Let's it play offense and defense simultaneously really nicely. Wow, this, like, worked out really well for us. Opponent trying to, like, act as a control deck when we just have way more card advantage available to us. What's going on? What's going on, Bolas? Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Trade Z's. Trade Z's.
That's true. They consciously let me draw an extra card there to deal an extra damage. Unknown Stuber coming in hot with the 15 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Just here for the timeout. Thanks for the four months, low one. Could be dead here. Could be dead here. If they attack, I'm gonna jump block. These both deal three were dead. Four, four lands and 15 cards. The mono red story. It might have been right to just play Bantu, but like this only has six toughness. Please point a burn spell at one of my creatures. Please point a burn spell at one of my creatures. Like every, every burn spell that hits one of our creatures here just feels like an absurd victory. Have a good night, Chalky. We'll catch you tomorrow. Of course, wake up. Ooh, that's really... That's good for the home team. It's good for the home team. My wrap-up was I ended up being a little bit disappointed with it, Jerry. It felt like it was kind of just less powerful than the other blue decks that I've played. Primarily, it really felt like it lacked a clock. Which, it definitely beat up things like Death and Taxes, but in a lot of the other matchups, I felt like I was a little bit behind. All right, Double Dreadhorn's gonna close real quick here. All right. Uh, I'm not playing this in ranked because it's kind of an untested archetype. So I have, I have no idea if this is good or bad. I've just never played with it before, so I'm not gonna gamble with it in ranked. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna untap and go Bolt Bolt or like instant Bolt, untap Bolt, but it is what it is. Yeah, they're dead, they're dead next turn. We faded a burn spell and we're gonna do it right. Can our rank go any lower after blue black after That's true. Hey, we're almost we're almost back into the top. Almost back into the top 1,000. Yeah, blue black blue black after was a mistake to play the ladder today. That one got real rough real quick. That seems fine. Bring in some more removal. Cut the card that kills us. Blue black, blue black, Kefnet. I wanted you to be good. You were not. Wanted you so badly to be good, blue black, Kefnet. I mean, we did pick up game one there, so maybe the plan is to just race mono red. After playing, after the last two times playing blue black after that, it is not a deck that I will play on the ladder again. It's just a little bit too clunky. Its answers just don't line up elegantly. I think I'd rather just be playing Esper. Yeah, Heartfire Heart is really sweet. As someone who's killed a lot of people with Shrapnel Blast over the years, Heartfire is like... A very similar card. Does, does similar things and they are also great. Yeah, I agree. Good power level for standard is it. An apt, apt descriptor. Alright, we're gonna lava coil the crap out of that one. 
Hopefully we hit a red source to get to cast this Phoenix on time. No attack, huh? Interesting decision. Yeah, that could definitely be true too. As as decks become more popular, more familiarized, people become better with the play patterns. Unknown unknown decks are definitely better the first few times you play them. It could also just be, you know, sample. I often talk about how sample size that you need for things to be relevant. Um, you know, the first time we played it, we only played like five or maybe six matches with it at most. So like to really know if something's good or bad from that sample size is just like not possible. Especially when people are like trying things earlier in the season. Yeah, yeah, always, Mocha. Pretty bad spot here since they had Legion War Boss and we don't have removal. Yep. <laughs> Needed to hit removal or land there. Build around. Build around some message, submissions just like everything else, Breezy. You can go through the form on the website. Yeah, that doesn't fix any of the problems, Malurin. We've played a lot of bad Grixis decks. Played played a lot of bad Grixis decks. Hey, Pizza, thanks for the tip. Thanks for the support. Sands pretty good if it draws some lands. I would like to block. Yeah, Lance. Uh, they were both complete and total dumpster fires, Fohawk. Is that is a rough morning or a rough afternoon? Our rank, our rank slid way down. All right, we drew a three drop, so let's just draw like land, land, land here and go three, four, five. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Charles. What matchup is Massacre Girl for? White Weenie, I imagine? It's the only, it's the only deck in the format where that card's possibly good, I think. Poor little Firebrand. Always catching Splash. Alright, if we get a land for Chandra, Chandra likely propels us into a land for Bantu, so that would be nice. G generally speaking, five mana cards are not really where you want to be against red deck wins. And if you're getting to a point where you're playing a five mana card against red deck wins, and they still have a bunch of creatures in play, you're probably dead. Because their creatures kill you very, very quickly. These red decks are basically burn decks. I'm just going to sacrifice one land here because there's a non-zero chance that my opponent kills this next turn when I block. So I want to be able to cast the next one if they do that. A TSMG, thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. Love the coverage, Jeff. Thanks for the insight and pragmatic advice. Well, thanks for the support. Uh, TS, if you want to take a peek at the deck queue on my website, I'd, I'd love it if you'd pick a deck in there to bump up. I always encourage the people that uh, keep me employed to kind of dictate the content that we have here. Seems only fair. I think this exchange is good for me. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck her in here. Trader Gator, get my deck. Get in my deck, Trader Gator. This is just gonna be bad for you. And with the with the Chandra, we actually just get to loop these every turn, right? So actually, actually seems like we're in an okay spot. Uh, 
Uh, I did not, Geoff. Sorry, it's getting late in the day and I've been on for a while, so I'm kind of kind of starting to lose some of the details. <laughs> um, is it worth alting this? I almost think it's not. No problem. Fire can't solve. Well, I mean, all right. I'm actually not going to sack a land this time because um, I want more lands when I ult this next turn. I mean, like, Bantu's been pretty good here, right? Like, it's absorbed a lot of damage. Fire with fire. My hand's real bad, so let's do this. Wheel of Batu! I think I just do this to try and kill them. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'm supposed to get Rekindling Phoenix out. Because Rekindling Phoenix, like, blocks twice. If they have, like, a third Chain Whirler here. I guess they have third Chain Whirler. They can't attack. I will say this again. Batu's a card that I was underwhelmed with in the past. It's been, it was really impressive in this match, both games. Just like both the 5 6 body and menace, just incredibly relevant. Light him up. You're on fire. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Do, 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 Yeah, we, like, we had enough lands in those games that, like, we could afford to throw one away every time we played it, right? So, made up for the fact that we were a little bit flooded. I don't think I can keep this on the draw in good conscience. It's just bad in general, right? Like, I don't... This is a hand that needs to draw lands and spells. Like, it doesn't have double red for this, and it doesn't have any early plays. Fears Edge, thanks for the quarter of your support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And Mitigain, thank you for the brand new Prime support. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Welcome, folks. Catching us right at the tail end here. I had more decks lined up, but I'm getting a little bit worn faster than I expected. So I think this is going to be my last one of the day. I'll be, I'll be back tomorrow after we wrap this one up for another 8 to 10 hours or so. Yeah, I agree. They did a the, the play design team did a good job getting these ones balanced. They're they're good without being obnoxious. Oh no, Nexus of Fun. Well, I appreciate that minigame. Was, uh, those subs help, help keep me making YouTube content. <sighs> I conceded there because even though my opponent wasn't going to kill me for a little while, we were nowhere near getting ready to kill them. And they were almost certainly going to combo before we got going. So rather than sitting there and spinning our tires for a couple of turns while they got set up, I'm just going to move on to the next game while they have minimal information about how to sideboard. You feel like this iteration of Aristocrats is stronger than the Orza version? I don't think so. I would be, or I would be, I would be surprised if that's the case. 
It also is, it could likely be the case that, like, directly comparing them doesn't quite make sense. Like, the black-white version goes a little bit longer better, whereas, like, this is more aggressively slanted with things like Judith in it. I was really impressed with not only Sorin, but also Oketra and, um, the, uh, what's the, what's the deal one, gain one card? I'm blanking on its name. Cruel Celebrant. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I don't know. Three color, three color aggressive decks leave a lot to be desired in my experience. The Mardu, the Mardu decks the last couple seasons have basically been the story of like, this deck's really good when it hits its lands and its colors, but a lot of the times it doesn't do that. It's very frequently stumbles and dies. All right, we get to punch them in the face a couple times, but we need to hit some lands here so we can actually attack them. All right, as far as like non-land draws go, this was towards the top. Yeah, I agree. When we played the black-white version, we dumpstered Wilderness Reclamation three times in a row. I would be surprised if this build has a similar similar result. They're not going to Nexus anytime soon, so I'm going to get Judy down and just get more power into play. Want to close the game out ASAP here, ideally. That's great, Light Hammer. Yay! What an interesting and stimulating game of magic. You want to go, tough guy? What's that smell? Oh, it's you burning. All right, so heart fires lethal. Let's light it up. We're on fire. <laughs> oh, magic. We didn't play a spell and conceded game one. They basically haven't played a spell before they die game two. This is where the magic happens, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is where the magic happens. Pretty happy with how we sideboarded. Let's run it back. Paula! Thank you for the very generous tier three resub. I appreciate that. And for the 14 months of that, thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a fantastic middle of your week. I mean, like, all things considered, this hand is a great curve, right? Just like, one, two, three. It's just elementary. What could it be? All right, I'm going to do this on one. Should have waited. <laughs> I think it's right to do that on one and tag a search for his can't if they have it. I mean, this hand's got a good bit of reach in it, to be fair. I think they messed up by not playing Blast Zone here. Do I kill them next turn? So if I attack with everything here, th these this is 4 down to 14. And the next turn I attack them for 8... And then this does four and this does four. So four plus eight plus eight is lethal, right? Yeah, that's 20. All right, so they gotta, we could, we might not get another turn. They could, they could kill us here.
All right, big bucks, no fog. Big bucks, no fog. And if they do fog, we get to draw a bunch of cards, which is still okay for us. Decks, decks that can kill through fog are definitely a real problem for them. Target you. Triggers. Face is the place, is the place, is the place. How's your face doing over there, opponent? It's, here, it's really nice this time of year. Dress. 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 The rest to check for the check for the counter spell. Alright. <laughs> Alright, it's grow it's growing on me, chat. It's growing on me. It's growing on me. This one might be in contention for one of the decks of the day. It's been a it's been a good Good, clean, just kind of hot knife through butter. Yeah, Dread, Dread Horde Butcher is like a very real Magic the Gathering card. Red Horde Butcher aficionado. <laughs> All right, you figured me out, Pekin. You figured you figured me out. You know, you get it. You know what's up. This this bodes well for me because they they've decided that my face is not the place for this dread horn trigger. So that means the rest of their hand can't be particularly aggressive, right? Now if like that trigger had gone to my dome, I'd be a little concerned here, but it didn't. So we're probably in an okay spot. Uh, huh. That seems weird. I guess they don't want to... Weird. Okay. Not, not going to complain. Not going to complain.
Atron Dragon. Thank you for... Wait, did I have lethal? Oh, yeah, the hard fire's lethal. Sorry, it's been... We've been live for over nine hours. Good call. Good call. Yay, magic card! Joy! Man, I'm glad this deck's good because I can't count. All right, these in, but Devil's in. Um, we just, yeah, we just, I just wanted to show off what we could do. Just wanted to show them we had a Chandra, you know, no big deal, no bigs. Is Chandra something I want to grind through with here? Or would I prefer to be a little bit lower to the ground? Probably a little bit lower. No, I don't think so, Stormy. It's going to be my last deck of the day. I'm, I'm a little bit beaten. Viewer numbers have dropped off. Need to cut one more. Probably Midnight Reaper. Uh, we did not get that far down the list, Walker. Watcher. I play play through the queue in order, so anything anything that's still listed is things we have yet to get to, and I update it as we go. Yeah, I really don't think this is a Massacre Girl matchup. We do we do have a pretty decent curve. Although, this card's much worse on the draw, huh? Yeah, come at me, buddy. Actually, I can treat here, right? Word. Mana, mana's awkward. Can't play this as well. Scale of one to dead. Where's my priest dead here? Maybe not dead? Maybe not dead? Why is it better to attack with Butcher first? Explain. They'll just block and trade and I don't really want them to block and trade. Judith into sack our target you sack both of these sure if it's lethal wild growth watcher you would you would make the play if it was lethal probably want to kill probably want to kill this Although I guess if I kill this, they have to sack one of these. That's probably fine. We're still ahead, right? 
I think I'm gonna heart fire this priest. Do I sack this? I think I sack this actually, right? Because I got two more priests in my hand. Like they're they're at one card and I've got seven <laughs> plus like gutter bones. Pre Priest plus Midnight Reaper plus Judith is just like mono messed up turns. What if what if we did something really busted together? They attack or take an easy block here. Yep, still walking. Health total. Health total is nowhere near high enough to not block here. That's an interesting draw. So I was going to go Priest plus to Ball, but getting triple two drop down here is very appealing. So, I can double activate Priest. Trying not to die here is a little complicated, though. What do I, what do I want to kill with these? So, like, I can activate, I can activate this. And then I sacrifice these two, obviously, which gives me two damage divided as I choose. I think I killed Judith to start, because I don't want her killing me or my stuff. Wow, and they went after they went after Tim Alt, so they think this game's gonna last for a little while. Okay. Lava Quail's an excellent draw here. This is actually lethal, right? I sacrifice this and this, and then I attack for three. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Huh. Huh. When this deck... When this deck clipped along, it really clipped along. Hey, Bird Bird. Thank you for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around here. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Yeah, huh. I don't know. I don't know that I'd really adjust much here. The fact that, like, Chandra and Phoenix as pieces of top end in in combination with Midnight Reaper really felt like they gave me a good bit of mid-game slash longevity in positions where my aggro plan kind of puttered out. And, like, just the random, you know, two power guy into Dreadhorde Butcher into, like, Judith Curves gave me some really aggressive starts against some decks like uh nexus that felt that felt like i really needed to pressure them thoughts on random things in the sideboard would be i'm not sure if i believe that this card is amazing i think it's kind of narrow in general and it probably is like good against like exactly white weenie and i feel like i'd rather just have a couple of moment of cravings like those are okay against white weenie but like they're also good against red aggro i i have a lot of respect for the red aggro deck Theater of Horrors is also a card that I'm not actually sure is good enough. So because one of the premier control decks in the format is still, um, is still Esper, I kind of feel like this is worse than just like having Planeswalker card advantage. So I think the changes I would make to this that I'm going to put on the website is I would go up an Angrath and I would put a third Chandra in the sideboard. And then I would put two moments over those, uh, over what those Massacre Girls were before. 
So if you want to grab this one, I'm going to throw it up on Stream Decker now, and this will be the 75 that's listed under the uh, under the YouTube video later. What am I looking for here? Yep. All right, so the Stream Decker is current for people that want to grab it now and play tonight before it's uploaded to YouTube. Remember, if you want more content for myself, you get over to my website, magicesports.net or jeffhoglund.com, youtube.com forward slash jeffhoglund. Lots of fantastic places to check that stuff out. Bantu actually really impressed me in the mono red matchup, and maybe the third one in the sideboard is overkill, but I was kind of just like, liked the chunky 5-6 body. I would want to play not only against more mono red with Bantu, but also specifically the... Um, the red green like aggro matchup because i think just like having a five six against red green is like really good in a lot of situations so i would want to test the red green matchup before i considered cutting bantu from the 75 um if you want to stay out and hang, hang out here on twitch rather than checking out some of my past videos i'm gonna go ahead and give someone a host here looks like uh wyatt darby is currently streaming some standard constructions when i send it over his way have a good one folks